Next speaker will be Yinkai Ouyang from University of Sheffield, and he will talk about, uh, I guess, deriving tight cramorial types of bonds through conic programming. So Ouyang, please take it away. Uh, thank you for the introduction and for you for attending my talk today. So today I'm very pleased to share with you my work with uh, Masahito Hayashi on this uh, um, quantum metrology problem. So, well, it's quite a mouthful for the title, so let's see. Um, ah. So let's um, define the problem. Um, this very mathematical problem. So uh, we, are, we are interested in this um, very um, abstract setting of uh, quantum metrology where, um, where, where you, you are given a set of uh, probe states and these are just quantum states uh, and, but inside these quantum states are, is embedded a, a parameter of, a parameter vector over here, theta. And this parameter vector is just a real vector and it has d components. Um, d components with d greater than one corresponds to the multi-parameter setting. In the previous talk, we considered uh, d equals to one, but over here, d is greater than one in general. And over here, these parameters belong to a set, a capital theta. And this quantum metrology problem, the canonical case, this set is a, well, continuous set. It's not a discrete set. So um, so you can imagine that you, you, you will be able to take derivatives of rho theta with respect to the parameter theta. Okay. And the quantum model is defined as the set of all, um, well, um, probe states uh, parameterized by this um, theta vector. <coughs> And so what is the goal in quantum metrology? In quantum metrology, um, actually, we don't know what theta is. Uh, uh, we want to estimate theta. Okay, so, um, so, so we want to make an estimator for theta uh, given this uh, quantum model. Of course, we need to do some, uh, you imagine you want to do some measurements and the optimum and um, the measurement that you are supposed to do on the models, that would be, um, your strategy. And of course, um, there has to be some metric in which you, um, well, measure the performance of your strategy. And um, for us, we want to uh, minimize the um, um, error of the measurement, which uh, in, in, um, is just the mean square error, usually, which is like kind of the variance which is also uh, what was considered in the previous talk. And, um, but in general, it will be um, hard to, you know, of course, you also want the estimator to be unbiased because um, if that is the, ex the expected value of, 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 of your, your estimator should be equal to the true value. Otherwise, your estimator is pretty bad, right? Um, uh, so, but uh, unfortunately for quantum metrology, it's not always well, it's, uh, we can only go for a locally unbiased estimator, which means that you need to have some prior uh, knowledge of your theta to begin with. Okay, um, but you can o always achieve this by um, doing some uh, initial estimates first before you consider this uh, setting. Okay, so I'm done with the first slide. So, um, <coughs> so the, uh, let us be more precise on what the mean square error is, because now we are considering a multi-parameter setting. So, uh, what do you mean by the mean square error of, uh, you know, something with multiple uh, parameters? Because, because the variance, uh, mean square error is just uh, like the square root of the variance, is is it's just a single number. But over here, um, uh, in quantum metrology, you often talk about a mean square uh, error matrix. So you don't minimize a matrix because it doesn't make sense to minimize a matrix. So from this uh, matrix, you need to get some numbers out. And what's in this matrix is just like the covariance matrix of the estimator over here. So uh, in order to um, um, get a number out from, from this matrix, you typically what you do is that you um, multiply some weight, some weight matrix next to it, uh, which uh, basically assigns like how important you think uh, uh, each of these parameters are, and you minimize the trace of the weight matrix multiplied by the mean square error matrix. So this is what you want to uh, minimize, and um, so this uh, can you can imagine the optimization problem you consider. This is the objective function. I haven't told you what the constraints are. Well, I kind of told you is uh, the uh, locally unbiased conditions, but um, for the moment I, I I will not show you mathematically what the locally unbiased conditions look like because um, um, 
Oh, actually, I did show you. So the, the locally unbiased conditions are right over here. So um, as, as you know, the unbiased condition is just saying, oh, the expectation is uh, of, 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 your, of your estimator is equals to, well, the true, the true value <laughs> over here. So over here, the, uh, you see these uh, 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 superscripts over here. This is just for the in indices for the different parameters over here. All right, so for locally unbiased, you basically uh, um, will, will be happy to uh, uh, take the derivative of this uh, expectation over here at, uh, uh, and, and, and you know, evaluate it at, at the true parameter. And, and you get, and, and from this, and from this uh, operational uh, meaning on the left side, you get some uh, funky uh, equalities on the, on the right side. But what's important is that in these uh, equalities over here, you notice that they are very nice uh, 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 linear uh, operators of, of, the, um, of the measurement uh, uh, operators over here. So, so basically, your constraints are basically linear, linear functions of your measurements, and uh, the objective function is, well, kind of, uh, a linear function of well um, pi of, of 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 the measurement. So so in in some sense, uh, you have uh, uh, the the uh, fundamental problem you have here is, is looking kind of like uh, uh, um, uh, something uh, optimization with a minimum uh, a linear objective function and a linear uh, constraints. So so this looks nice. All right. So, so now, now let us uh, review uh, what uh, the Kramer Kramer Rao bound is. So, uh, uh, in the single parameter setting, is 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 clear. So, uh, basically, you want to you want to minimize the mean square error, um, and and subject to the locally unbiased constraints. And for and for the um, single parameter setting, uh, this this ultimate uh, uh, precision bound, which is the uh, the well the minimum variance subject to locally unbiased constraints. This is totally known and is given by. Um, well, the Fisher information matrix, uh, J, you can calculate, given your quantum model, you can always make a Fisher information matrix, and then you can calculate what the bound is, and then you can imagine, okay, so I'm going to make a Fisher information matrix, I mean, well, I'm, uh, well, for single parameters, you don't have a matrix, but for multi-parameters, you have a matrix, so you're going to make, so let's imagine that you generalize the Fisher information stuff to a matrix, and you say, well, I'm just going to calculate this, and, uh, uh, um, and does this give me some value? Of course it does, because uh, you can evaluate this and you get a number, and this is just uh, called the SLD Kramer Rao bound. Uh, but it doesn't, although it's a bound, it's not tight, so it's not the, um, it's, it's, it's not the, um, the, 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 the ultimate bound. So, so there are many, so in the multi parameter case, the SLD bound is not enough to, um, to address. To, to, to address this multi-parameter problem. So, uh, so there has been uh, other work like um, uh, based on whole levels uh, in inequality. Nagaokwa uh, uh, came up with some um, ideas that uh, you can lower bound this uh, um, basically um, mean square error stuff with some funky stuff over here. And, and then you get this uh, whole level Nagaoka bound, which is uh, tighter than the, um, well, uh, the SLD bound. Okay, cool. So, um, <coughs> so um, in in general, there there uh, in a metrology problem, you can imagine um, um, there to be it's a it's a kind of an asymptotic problem. So so you have to imagine that you have infinite number of probe states. Yes. So so you have infinite number of probe states, and and uh, using this infinite number of probe states, after you do some measurement, uh, you would imagine that you have this measurement that can act uh, simultaneously on all, all these infinite. Uh, 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 probe states, and this is what you call like a correlated uh, measurement, uh, and it is, it is what um, what you would um, do. Um, it is what you would do, uh, but the problem is uh, um, you don't want to do this in the lab because you can't you can't uh, do um, a, a, a correlated measurement on all infinite copies. So maybe you can only do a, a measurement locally on, on, a, on a probe state at a time. So, uh, so the idea is that, well, uh, you want to uh, uh, investigate the, the ultimate precision bound for the uncorrelated case. And, uh, and for the whole level Nagaoka bound, uh, it, 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 is, it does give the ultimate precision bound for the correlated setting, but not for the uncorrelated setting, which is what uh, this paper uh, will address. So um, in the uncorrelated setting, there has also been prior work. There has, uh, so Nago Nagaoka has um, yet another bound, uh, which you, you can uh, uh, use to um, address the, um, well, 
the the uncorrelated setting case, and and basically is is it looks like a, a mess over here. But the, the point is that this uh, Nagaoka bound is different from the whole level Nagaoka bound that you saw earlier. But it's just it's just a different bound, um, but by the same person Nag Nagaoka, right? So uh, <coughs> and 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 then there's also the um, but this Nagaoka bound is a very old bound, so it only deals with the case when d equals to two. So, um, but the, the Nagaoka's idea was um, um, was used and uh, well, kind of generalized by um, a bunch of people, um, and it's called the Nagaoka Hayashi bound. And this bound actually uh, was come up with. Um, was was studied in this paper actually not by the authors Nagaoka or Hayashi actually by a different set of authors but they called it the Nagaoka Hayashi bound. Uh, so so anyway, this Nagaoka Hayashi bound um, uh, studies the un uncorrelated uh, setting and basically it is this funky minimization problem and and let's see how funky it is. Um, basically, uh, in the objective function, it is um, uh, the optimization variable is some huge uh, uh, parameter uh, x prime over here. And what is x prime? X prime is basically a block matrix. It is a block matrix, and um, each within each block, uh, the space is like isomorphic to the space of the probe state. So basically, the number of blocks here is basically uh, d plus one square. So d is the number of parameters. Here parameters you're estimating. So in this example over here, uh, d is equal to 2. So d plus 1 is 3. So this is a 3 by 3 uh, matrix. So um, so you have, yeah, so so, so you have this um, um, uh, x uh, um, uh, with, a, with a block structure. So, you're, so this is the uh, um, operator that you are optimizing, this, this funky x thing over here. And uh, basically, the objective function is just the is just the um, this weight matrix tensor the probe state. So it's basically well a linear function of x, which looks nice. And the constraint the constraint looks nice also because it's just like some semi definite constraint. It's just like some semi definite order um, on some funky function again. Okay, so, and so and so, what the authors showed that is that the Nagaoka Hayashi bound uh, is is basically can be eva evaluated using a semi-definite program, and and I checked for myself, uh, it, it's true, um, I I could evaluate it, and I was happy. So, um, but however, there was this uh, so-called tight kramer rao bound, uh, which uh, Hayashi came up uh, over twenty years ago uh, in this uh, very um, early paper, uh, actually maybe twenty-five years ago. Uh, 26, no, 20, 26 years ago. Yes. So, um, and, and, and this, in this problem, he came up with this optimization problem where basically, uh, well, kind of, um, um, he has this primal formulation in which he says that, well, I'm just going to minimize this funky function over all uh, uh, subject to the locally unbiased conditions. But then he wrote, he found that it, 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 it emitted a dual formulation. And the dual formulation uh, has a very funky form. Basically, it's the maximization of, of the trace of two operators. One of them is just a, uh, uh, the trace of a real matrix. Well, the A matrix, for lack of better name. And uh, the S matrix, which is a, a complex emission matrix, which is the the same size as the probe state. So the A matrix is like the size of, 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 of the parameter space, and, and the S is like the size of, of the um, probe sp space. And basically, uh, because it's a dual formulation, of course, you would imagine that these dual operators, they arise as a a natural Lagrange multipliers to, um, to the original primal problem, which I have no time to explain. But anyways, for, for the constraints that um, we have is subject to this uh, po positive semi-definite constraints. But the problem with this set of constraints is that it has to hold for all, for all real x. Uh, uh, and, and the set of x is basically over uh, uh, the real space of d dimensions. So basically, you have a continuously infinite uh, 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 number of, of variables to, to consider. So even though uh, this gives the ultimate uh, kramer rao bound for the uncorrelated uh, uh, measurement strategies, it is impossible, it is impossible to uh, numerically find out what uh, this, this would be. So the, the question, the outstanding question is, well, can we evaluate what this number is? Okay, uh, this looks hopeless, right? Uh, so, uh, and also, well, if, if you can evaluate the number, can you find the optimal measurement strategy? Well, it seems even more hopeless because you can't even solve the first problem. Um, all right, and, and also, is this problem even useful? I mean, is there like, uh, why should I evaluate this horrible thing if you can uh, evaluate the Nagaoka Hayashi bound, which is a SDP? Is there a gap between this uh, bound and the Nagaoka Hayashi bound? 
because if there's no gap, then why should I evaluate this horrible quantity over here, right? So, um, right. So, so the main results, of course, as you would expect from the way I pose the questions, is that we solve all these problems and we are very happy. And um, the sad part is, of course, it's an impossible uh, paper. It's very hard to read. Um, so, uh, the uh, so, but I'll, I'll I'll give you an idea. So, the, so the idea is that. Is, is, is we are going to uh, use the pr uh, uh, framework of conic programming to uh, unify a lot of problems in, in uh, multi-parameter estimation. So uh, as we saw in the previous uh, um, work on the Nagaoka Hayashi bound, we had this uh, nice little uh, block matrix idea where basically you, you, you're optimizing over X, where X, uh, each block is over the probe states. Now, uh, in, in our, in our uh, conic programming framework, we are, we are also uh, basically, uh, um, basically, well, so, so we are basically also um, 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 optimizing this uh, trace of G tensor row X. But however, the constraints are, are just going to be that X belong to different cones over of, 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 of these axes with these different structures. And for the ultimate uh, kramer rao bound, the cone is going to be like uh, kind of uh, the, the separable type of uh, matrices on, on this space. And if you and if you uh, choose the cone to be like the set of all semi-definite matrices on on this space, then you basically uh, recover like the SLD bound and and so on. So basically, you have a hierarchy of different bounds. Uh, you, you you can make different cones according to your favorite, uh, well, according to very specific methods. And we can and we call these uh, 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 different conic programming problems uh, basically P1, P2, P3, P4. And we show that they um, they reproduce basically well. P4 corresponds to the SLD bound, P5, the whole level Nagaoka bound, which basically whole level bound, and the Nagaoka Hayashi bound, and the P1. So basically, there's a nested structure of these cones. So, so obviously, well, all of the, um, uh, all of the mm, uh, multi, uh, multi parameter metrology bounds uh, have this nice, uh, well, hierarchy, a nested structure. It's nice. So, um, Right, so so have this nice structure, but then I haven't answered the question of how do you actually calculate the ultimate bound. I mean, so just knowing that these bounds satisfy this nice nested structure is is not good enough. So uh, basically, uh, the idea is that um, okay. So in in uh, Hayashi's original work uh, uh, for the dual problem, you had the x to to optimize over over this. Uh, or all of the real space of D dimensions, which seems uh, like hopeless. Uh, so, so, but the idea is that, well, um, maybe we can just make a discrete set uh, to, to uh, approximate the, the whole set of, of uh, the whole infinite set of, um, of D parameters. So, so uh, the idea is that now you consider this uh, D, D dimensional hyperspeed, hypersphere, and, and you consider like some um, covering of the hy hypersphere, a discrete covering, and and based and 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 basically you can write down uh, what what these um, uh, vectors are be uh, are, are, and based on these vectors, I'm going to um, make I'm going to uh, discretize uh, Hayashi's original problem, and basically uh, make a, a, a tractable thing. So basically, these are all, all the vectors uh, that are, are are in this um, well covering of the d-dimensional hypersphere. Well, actually, it's d plus one dimensions, but yeah. So, um, and then based on that, uh, those vectors, I'm going to write down a semi-definite program uh, where where I have a huge number of constraints, uh, one that corresponds to each of those vectors. Of course, the details are are too much for me to explain. I'm almost out of time. So, um, but 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 there's a primal formulation and a dual formulation, and 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 because and because um, you basically have. Uh, didn't consider all of the vectors in the entire space. So you, so basically, uh, from this uh, semi-definite program, we we obtain uh, very naturally uh, 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 an upper bound for the tight kramer rao bound. Then the question, the non-trivial question, is how do you get the the lower bound uh, uh, for it, um, which is also tight. So so to get the lower bound, what I all I need to do is that uh, I need to I need to uh, consider um, the dual formulation of I I, I need to construct. I want to construct a feasible solution for for the tight Kramer Rao bound, and the tight Kramer Rao bound has this conic programming um, 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 formulation, and and 
well. So, uh, well, but I'm, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use uh, Hayashi's original formulation, this dual formulation. And basically, I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct a, a, a feasible solution for the dual program of Hayashi's original problem. And with any feasible solution to the dual program, you automatically get a lower bound because the dual program is a maximization. So any feasible solution is a lower bound. So once I have, have a feasible solution to this, uh, I, I, I will have the low, lower bound. But of course, the non-trivial part is how do you, do you actually construct a feasible solution? And basically, what we we showed is that first, first of all, let, okay, let's 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 do it simple, right? So let's just solve the the upper bound problem first. So from the optimal solution of the upper bound, right? You're going to you're going to uh, uh, make you're going to make uh, 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 the the um, you're going to make an educated guess on on what is a feasible solution for 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 for, for Hayashi's uh, dual problem, and basically um, that uh, that is the trick. So, um, because I only have maybe one minute, so basically, uh, <laughs> so um, from so once you solve this primal SDP problem, then you're happy. You get the axis, and from the axis. Uh, there are many axes that correspond to each of the vectors on this uh, hypersphere. And from each of these axes, you can construct uh, this M matrix. And hey, it turns out these M matrices actually they form a POVM. Actually, this, these are the POVMs that you should measure uh, uh, for to attain to attain the bound given by the SDP. And since we show that uh, as the as the um, well as the covering radius of of the hypersphere goes to zero the bound the 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 the, the upper and the lower bound uh, 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 goes to zero and hence our our numerical bound is tight all right i've explained this in words already so um so there so there are many ways to construct uh there, there are many ways to construct the hypersphere you can use your favorite method we use we have our favorite method which is kind of the obvious method um and um yeah and and this is our, our numerical result uh, so, so we we showed numerically uh, uh, based on on random uh, values of uh, so we we fix the probe state, but then we we, we make random uh, derivatives of 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 the um, probe states, and based on that we find that uh, uh, in in most of the time, we we have a gap between um, this uh, tight kramer rao bound and mm, the um, Nagaoka Hayashi bound, and with that. Uh, of course, so we dealt with this uh, um, uh, parameter estimation problem, but of course you can apply it to the uh, channel estimation problem as well, for example, uh, in these two examples. And um, this concludes my work with a picture of, of the work. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the nice talk and being very punctual. And question? Actually, maybe I take the liberty of maybe uh, I just uh, uh, I got a bit confused about the position of the NH Nagoka Hayashi bound, right? Uh, so I it seems to me that you mentioned that it is uh, tighter than the Holovo Nagoka bound, right? Yeah. So yeah. I thought like Holovo Nagoka bound would be tight and achieved by correlated oh. measurements. So the, then, if you are restricting to uncorrelated measurement, wouldn't the arrow be s potentially larger? And oh yeah, like so, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, okay, so so maybe I um, so mm -hmm. yeah. So so the um, yes. So 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 you're right. So uh, I I I uh, didn't say it properly. So. Um, so <coughs> indeed, the um, maybe, maybe I should explain from this slide. So um, because the cones, like the t this tight cone, is the smallest cone. So uh, so so the value for this uh, Kramer Rao bound is the largest, followed by the NH bound, the whole level bound, and SLD bound. Indeed, as you um, okay, uh, thanks. Thanks. Yes, thanks yes, 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 this is really nice uh, uh. visualization. Any <laughs> any further question? Okay, so if not, let's uh, enjoy the coffee break. Let's thank the speaker again and uh, enjoy the coffee break. <laughs> and thank you all for coming.